Hey guys, and welcome to the Watchtower Watch Views with your host DK. And today we're looking at the Heimdallr monster. So of course this is an homage of the Seiko monster. A really popular watch, very distinctive looks. This one I didn't buy myself, nor did it come to me from the company Heimdallr. This one actually came to me from my buddy watches with George. George is a good friend of mine, he's lent a couple of things into the channel before. And he's got another one in for me as well uh, that he's loaned me, his Heimdallr Snowflake. That will be coming in a future review. So let's take a look today at his blue Heimdallr monster and let's see if it is indeed worth picking up. Let's take a look. So this one came to me by way of Watches with George, but to him, it came to him from the official Heimdallr store. I'll drop a link down below. Inside in the box, you can see you get the watch. George has gone for the blue variant, which is quite nice actually. There's an orange, there's a red, and I believe there is a green variant as well. And they have introduced a new silver frost version, which looks quite nice. Uh, inside the box as well, you have the spare links. So I have, I believe, five links taken out. Yeah, five links taken out. And underneath here, which would normally be the warranty card. Now, in this one, it doesn't come with the warranty card because this one actually went to George for free. But this is normally where you'd get your two-year warranty card as well. So that's your lot. So dimensions, similar to the Seiko version, of course, 42 millimeters in diameter, 46 millimeters at that crown at the four o'clock position, or 345 if we want to be really specific. Lug tip to lug tip, you're looking at 47.4 millimeters with drilled lugs. Lug width is 20 millimeters with a flared bracelet going to 23 millimeters, tapering down and then back up to 20 at that clasp. The thickness on this one, you're looking at about 13.3 millimeters by my measurements with digital calipers. So 13.3, yeah, 13 and a half if you want to round up. And the weight with all links included is 190 grams, five links removed, so it fits my seven inch wrist. You are looking at 171 grams. So specs on this one, and it is all 316L specified stainless steel. On that case, the crown, the bezel, and the bracelet. You can see there, it is a high polished crown, so it will get a bit grimy every now and then. The bracelet there, a mixture of brushed and polished. You can see there as well, the case and the actual bezel are a mixture of brushed and polished as well. There's kind of gaps in between, aping the look of, of course, the Seiko Monster, giving you that brushed and polished mix brushed on the lugs with a polish on the between the mid lugs there and you can see they are drilled as well if you want to take that bracelet off. The, the bezel is all stainless steel as well and it is not got a ceramic insert or anything like that. The bracelet you can see there solid link and solid end link bracelet predominantly brushed and you can see there high polish on the sides it is push pins on the side. As well it's a signed clasp it is a signed middle clasp with the Heimdallr logo and the Heimdallr brand you can see there and it is again all stainless steel with three levels of micro adjust. However as I said if you don't like the bracelet or a clasp for any reason you can just stick your spring bar tool in there and you'll be able to pop out that bracelet nice and easy because of those drilled lugs. A really convenient thing on any watch. You do get a flat sapphire crystal but I think there might be a bit of a dome to this you can see a bit of distortion there. I'm also not sure if there's AR coating on it. It's described as flat and they haven't specified, but I don't know if it's the blue on this one dial or whether it's the blue on the AR coating, but there is a bit of a pop of blue. The bezel itself is actually, is guarded by these sort of guards. You can see there, there's a kind of a shroud down below protecting the bezel from being knocked around the place. It is 120 clicks on that bezel, nice and solid. I'll shut up so you can hear it. Nice satisfying clicks and of course that bezel does actually line up, that loom pip lines up perfectly at the 12 o'clock position. Unsigned screw down crown and a signed screw down case back uh, gives this one 200 meters of water resistance. Signed with the Heimdallr logo of course. You can see there as well specifying sapphire crystal, automatic movement which we'll get to in a minute. All stainless steel and the water resistance. The movement, of course, inside is the Seiko NH36. It hacks, it hand winds, beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, so six ticks at a second hand per second. Unwind it once for the hand winding feature. Pull it out another time, and it allows you to set the day and the date. A little bit hard to get this one actually out, just because of the fact that those crown guards are so prominent. Wind towards you to turn the date wind away from you to turn the day and pull it out a third time and it gives you that hacking function meaning the second hand stops and allows you to adjust the time. 
if we take a look at this one nice and close up you can see there that looks like a pop of AR coating on the crystal to me you have of course your loom pip at the 12 o'clock you have your double teeth indices at the 12 o'clock position with the Heimdaller shark just below it you've got that sort of uh, I don't know what you'd call that. I kind of like the toothpick minute hand along with the two, uh, the arrow point on the second hand and a big arrow for the hour hand. You have a frame date and day window at there at the 3 o'clock position. Single indices then and larger ones at the 6 and the 9 position. Automatic divers, 200 meters water resistance stamped there just above the 6 o'clock position. Everything nicely legible, nicely applied and there is a printed minute track as well so you can use it diving. And here it is out on my 7 inch wrist in some natural light. You can see there it does actually conform quite well to the wrist despite looking quite chunky. It has a very unusual appearance with those cut in teeth looking indices as well. The dial is sort of cut in to allow them to fit. You can see there it does flow down very nicely though into the wrist. However, if you don't like the bracelet, you could throw it on silicone. This is just a Pagani design one I had lying around the house. They sent it to me for free. Uh, came with a watch, I can't remember which one. But again, it actually suits it despite the fact that the bracelet has a bit of flair to it. I was worried that it would look a bit thin. I don't think it does. I think it actually suits it quite well. However, again, another option, and I'm not so sure about this. This is a Ritchie watch bands leather strap. The strap is very nice. It's very comfortable. It wears well. I just don't think you can dress up a monster, unfortunately. They're a very specific look, they're a very specific purpose. They're not made to be dressed up like, say, a Submariner homage. This one is very much a dive style watch. However, if again you want to put it on something different, this one is a JC Watch Bands Marine National. It's quite nice actually. Uh, I bought it a couple of years ago and it served me well in a couple of videos. And I've had it on a couple of different watches as well, particularly that day last waveform I had in for review a while back. However, if you really want to lean into that monster and that shark vibe, how about this a Milanese mesh? I don't have a shark mesh or a razor wire bracelet. I think both of those would look amazing on this as well. I'll drop affiliate links for all these bracelets and straps as well in case you want to pick any of them up. But if you were going for something other than the bracelet, I think this one's not a bad way to go. And finally, we do have one other option. This is a canvas strap with a leather backing to it. I believe they call them a hybrid with white stitching. This was an eBay job. It does the job quite nicely. It's not my favorite strap on this watch. So if I was going to pick my favorite, it would either be the Milanese or it would be the silicone. I think those are the options if you, for some reason, decide you don't want it on the bracelet. The loom on this one is very good. Now, it's not quite as good as my SKX homage, also made by Heimdaller. I thought that performed a little bit better, but there is a fantastic green glow off this one with the C3 Superluminova, of course, on it. And it is Japanese Superluminova that they are claiming to use. I did find that it was very good initially at the start, and it did do quite well throughout but I felt it wasn't quite as good on camera as the SKX homage was that they did originally. Now, don't get me wrong, when I turned the camera off and when I actually looked for the watch, I could immediately find it. It wasn't as if the watch suddenly disappeared on me and I couldn't see it anywhere. But I just thought it didn't perform quite as well as the SKX homage that they do. It's a shame. So what are my likes and dislikes on this one? Well, the first like I have with this is that it wears quite small. Like it's a big chunky, well, it looks like a big chunky watch, but it certainly doesn't wear like one. It fits down nicely into the wrist and the lug design makes it that it just drops nicely. That is a thing that you find with a lot of Seiko and Seiko homages. They really know how to make a short lug to lug on a big watch work. Also, I really like the aggressive looks on this one. You've got the really strong bezel design. You've got the really strong teeth. You've got the hands. You know, it's very in your face. It's very, this is a tool watch. This is not a dress watch. This is not a tool watch you dress up. This is a watch for going out and, I don't know, hunting sharks or swimming with barracudas or, I don't know, fishing <laughs> just to tone it down a small bit on the rhetoric there but uh, no i mean look there's no there's no credit goes to hind dollar for that but they have replicated and homage the look of the monster perfectly really really good i even like the fact that those lugs actually split out a little bit and you can see that the bracelet tapers down quite nicely very very interesting choice of design again as a thing from seiko but still good that they followed that i think it just gives it a bit of a different look I do have to say as well, I think that Heimdaller makes some of the best bracelets at the price point. They're very, very comfortable. They're very easy to wear and the clasp is always milled. A great choice. For $179, you're not getting a whole lot of a better bracelet than this. On the flip side, some of the dislikes, unfortunately, with this one are, well, 
the aggressive looks. Uh, you're not going to wear this to every function. You're not going to wear this everywhere you go. It's a very specific look. Also, the crown guard is really hard sometimes to grip. Like, it seems easy at times, and then other times I've almost cut my finger trying to get the crown out on those guards. They are, again, a holdover from the Watch This Is Imagine, the Seiko Monster. And it is very, very specific. They are designed for a specific purpose to stop it of knocking and getting damaged. But I just don't know. Now, in this day and age, it can be sharp and it can be a little bit awkward to deal with. As well, that shroud doesn't help sometimes when you're trying to get a good grip on that crown. When you do get a ton screw, it's a very grippy crown and it is good. But it's just getting at it sometimes can be a bit difficult. And speaking of crowns, Heimdaller, please, please, please start signing your crowns. Just put the little shark on them, put a H on them, put whatever the hell you want on them. But blank crowns just don't make any sense anymore. Like you're getting a really good watch and it's just such a small thing. I really wish they did sign the crown. However, if that's the only complaint I really have about this one, then it's a very, very good watch. And to be quite honest, it is. I found it excellent and I really enjoyed my time with it. So guys, there you have it, my review of the Heimdaller Monster. Big thanks to Watches with George again. Really appreciate him letting me have a look at this one. It's a very nice watch. I enjoyed my time with it a lot. Very distinctive looks, as is the Seiko Monster. Not something you'd have as a one-watch collection, but definitely, if you love the looks of this one, it's a great piece, well put together, well-priced, well-specced. You can't go wrong for the money. Guys, if you have liked the review, make sure to like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out George's channel, there'll be a link in the description below. I have been your host, DK. This has been the Watchtower Watch Views, and I will see you guys next time.